Going into this football season, nobody ever said the Ravens were going to be perfect. And I don't think anybody expected them to either. And if they did, yeah, you, you set yourself up for that one. But anyway, they have a lot of issues. Some are new issues, some are old issues, and some are issues that just have us scratching our heads and wondering what is going on. But what is the biggest issue? What are the biggest issues? And are they issues that are fixable? Can these things be rightened, even though that's not even a word? Can they be solved? Well, in order to solve and answer that question, we bring on a very special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, a very, very special guest uh, in the building. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I got my guy, Jamil, here. Before we get into it, because we got a lot to discuss, uh, let everybody know where to find you at, exactly what it is that you do, uh, especially on Twitter. Let everybody know. Definitely on Twitter. Um, my, at, my Twitter handle is Jamil7 underscore. Jamil7 underscore, uh, J-A-M-E-E-L. The number seven and then the underscore that's how you can find me on twitter um i engage a lot if you want to talk football get at me dm you know on the timeline however you want to do it man i'm 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 i'm, I'm with it i'm with all the smoke i should say <laughs> <laughs> hey he ain't lying though man um and, and that's exactly what we're getting ready to do uh today because especially after the, the way that the giants game has went and it, it really the way that a lot of these games have went for the baltimore mm -hmm. ravens um, there has continued to be so much to talk about. Um, and the Ravens are sitting right now at three and three. And, and just overall, how are you feeling about the Ravens right here, right now? Oh, man. So um, it's kind of weird because it's, it's, just, it's like um, the feeling that I have for them is like kind of how the Ravens made me feel when Joe Flacco was here, yeah. like boring um I'm just a lot of boredom haven't felt like this since that 2018 season prior to Lamar taking over Ooh. it's kind of like those feelings are you know starting to creep back um mm -hmm. for me because I I just feel like um it's like re uh repeating cycle it's just over and over again same mm -hmm. things going on uh Marlon Humphrey literally made a tweet about you know insanity just doing something over and over again and that's all it's like a repeated cycle every week. And it's, you know, that's just where I'm at with it, man. I it's like I don't even know what to expect anymore going into these games. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of us will feel you on that too. We, mm -hmm. we don't know what to expect. Um, but with a lot of what Ravens have been doing these past six games, mm -hmm. it sort of is like we kind of do know what to expect. Ravens right. get they get a significant lead and then yeah. that lead shrinks down and then they yeah. go through all the drama towards the end yeah. of the game. Um, but after watching these Ravens, uh, what would you say right now is the Ravens' biggest issue? Uh, coaching. Mm. Coaching is the biggest issue. Um, I know we like to say that the personnel, the wide receivers and things of that nature, uh, we all know that that's a, you know, we could use some help in that position um, <laughs> as well as edge. We all know that, right? But we just lost to a team who has a receiver that they gave $20 million that wasn't wasn't on the field. Mm -hmm. Kadarius Tony, they spent the first round pick on Kadarius Tony. He was not on the field. Mm -hmm. They beat us with literally with no receivers. You know what I'm saying? So they don't they didn't have any receivers. They beat us with Saquon Barkley and with our mistakes. So mm -hmm. I just don't uh, I think it's coaching, man. If Brian Dayball or if, uh, you know someone that you know have a little bit more expertise in um offensive play calling, I think mm -hmm. if they had this roster, you would see a lot of, you know, a lot more success in, in different areas. I think um, we're struggling with the talented roster. I think we do have talent on this roster and I think we could make things happen. Um, our record is a, you know, it's, it's really not a good representation of what this team is about as far as the talent wise, because the Giants doesn't, they don't have a far more talented roster than we do. Like right. they're, they're actually less talented than we are the Giants and they're five and one. 
that's what I, I go back to coaching. Coaching is the, 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 the common denominator between us and the Giants and, mm. and a couple other teams. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can see why you would say that. Um, there's been a lot of uh, silly mistakes in both mm-hmm. wins and losses uh, mm-hmm. from the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and there seems to be, in my opinion, there seems to be just a lack of leadership. Um, yes. And it seems to be a lack of, I know it kind of sounds like the same thing, but it, it seems like there's a lack. Uh, there's a lack of just somebody for the players to look up to and really follow. Right. Um, and, and what I mean when I say that, like, you see stuff, and I guess it does have a lot to do with coaching too. You see stuff mm-hmm. like, for example, um, the Dafe away penalty, where yeah. the Ravens they uh they had just stopped the the Giants on third down. It's getting ready to be fourth down, fourth and one, I think. Yep. And the Dafe away, he's holding up uh, Ben Bredesen's helmet, former Raven, yep. by the way, yep. uh, holding up his helmet, waving it up in the air. Then he puts it on the ground, kicks it a right. little bit. And I'm thinking, like, man, like, what, what's going on for a player to do that, especially in that moment, and especially with with somebody like with the uh, the characteristics and, and the vibe that Adafi Away has. Like Adafi Away, I remember when he first got drafted, just he was super chill, super laid oh, back. Yeah, yeah. All his family, they in the background screaming, yelling, ah, they going crazy. And you hear him talking in the interview. He just sitting there. Yeah, I'm ready yeah. to go to work. <laughs> got drafted by the Ravens. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. here first round. Okay, cool. And, and and that's how he is. Every time you hear him in a press or whatnot, he's not this crazy energetic guy. But and not to say he can't be, but to see him do that, it was just very uncharacteristic of an Adafe away. Yeah. Um, but it just something like that just it made it seem like this team and, and it, again the, the the silly penalties, not mm-hmm. even just the penalties in general, but the silly penalties. Um, that's continues to be an issue. Illegal formations. Um, mm, that's another one. And <laughs> <laughs> illegal formations, illegal shifts. Um, 12 men on the field, man. Yeah. 12, 12 men, men on the field. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> Silly stuff. Yeah, Silly. man. So with, with, with that, what you're saying coaching uh, is yeah. the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. What, what would you do to fix it? How do you think um, Ravens can go about addressing it? Okay, so I was in a space and guys were saying, you know, gut out everything, blow it up and things of that nature. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have an issue with that, but because it's it's not like we haven't changed coaching in the mid, middle of a season and then we went to the Super Bowl last time we did that. Remember, we fired Cam Cameron, brought in Jim Caldwell. Well, yes and no. We didn't. Because no, that in 2012 they did that. They they, right. they fired uh Cam Cameron uh-huh. and um and Caldwell took over. Ravens right. went to the Super Bowl. Right. But it wasn't the last time that they did that. Because in 20, I want to say 2016, on October 16th, no, they fired um they fired Mark Tressman oh, on October yes. 16th. Yeah. I, I forget about so, Mark Tressman. I, a, a <laughs> lot of us do, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> I forget about Tressman. I forget about Tressman. Okay, so and, and I, I say that to say we've done it and had success doing it. So we went to the Super Bowl that year when we fired Cam Cameron and we got Jim Caldwell. Um, but the difference is when you blow it all up, I, a lot of people are talking about head coach, mm-hmm. offensive coordinator. They're saying everything, not just the OC switch. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those people that feel like, you know, it just it ran its course. You know, things get old after a while it's time for something new it's it's okay it's not to say that john harbaugh isn't a, a good head coach and mm-hmm. that greg roman wouldn't have success elsewhere it's just time to move on i think it ran its course that whole lamar with john harbaugh thing it just ran its course i think it's time for you know them to 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 go a different direction the the, the ravens organization mm. yeah that, that's that's powerful right there because if they because my thinking has been this, um, they could get rid of Greg Roman tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of Ravens fans jumping for joy. Yeah, Greg Roman is out. Giro has gone. But my biggest fear with that uh, would be that the cycle would just continue. They will bring in another offensive coordinator, as they have done. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they, they done fired plenty of offensive coordinators over the years, got rid of them and whatnot. <laughs> but it continued to be the same cycle where we mm-hmm. like, man, we complaining about the Ravens offense, complaining about the Ravens offensive coordinators. 
And then the heat gets turned up enough, and then boom, all right, that offensive coordinator is fired, but they bring in somebody else Mm -hmm. uh, who does a lot of the same stuff. Exactly. Um, So this is why, for me, I've been real big. And something that you mentioned before we went uh, we, before we went live is that uh, the philosophy, uh-huh. uh, the just the there seems to be a a, a, a holdup with yeah. the philosophy uh, as far as Ravens uh, moving in a different direction for what they for where they have been so far. How do you feel the Ravens should move when it comes to their overall philosophy? Um, I'm at a point now where I feel like they are in a bit of an identity crisis. Mm. Um, I feel like over the last couple of draft classes, minus last this most recent one, I feel like there were um, things going on where EDC was taking a certain type of players, certain type of players in the draft that didn't mm. necessarily align with Greg Roman's offense, the, the offense that John Harbaugh also loves to run. He mm. loves to run the ball. Um, that's just the philosophy, uh, defense. And running the ball, controlling the clock. Mm-hmm. I think they I think it's it's time for something new. It's time to go in a different direction. I, I don't not gonna say you need to be a pass happy team, but I just think that they need to go in a different direction where is though the way that they're running their offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think I, it just needs to go in a different direction because it's just it's 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 ran dry. It's ran dry. It's where we've seen this since 2019. It was exciting. It was oh my god, it was so exciting. Lamar won an MVP in 2020. Teams kind of got, you know, a little acclimated to what we do. So it kind of mm-hmm. slowed down a little bit. And then in 2021, you know, we got hit with all the injuries. Now we're looking like, you know, what's going on type of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, man. And um, I know a lot of times when we've talked about that same thing on here with the Ravens sort of shifting their philosophy. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be this just, all right, pass, 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 pass. You do right. want more emphasis on the passing game, on the receivers, on the mm-hmm. corral concepts, all that stuff. Um, but that's not to say, oh, the run game is, is going to be neglected. No, there's nothing like that. Um, right. But just want more emphasis on that passing game. And this year, it seems as if they, they started going in that direction. That direction, yeah. A bit. So things have been changing, but... I just, I'm almost scared. Like, like you said, it almost seems like even with them making that shift this year, it just, it almost seems like it's almost kept. Now, yeah. Lamar, he certainly hasn't been perfect at no. all. He, he has, has not been perfect. He has not. Uh, you know, this past week against the Giants, uh, he missed a couple throws. Last Ooh. week against um, the Bengals, uh, he missed the two touchdowns, and then he also had overthrown Demarcus Robinson, which ended up leading to that interception. So Lamar has certainly not been perfect. No, 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 no. He has not been perfect at all. Um, yeah, it's you know people don't like that though. You better not say that. Don't 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 criticize Lamar. <laughs> don't <laughs> oh, criticize nice. Lamar, man. You can't criticize LJ. Um, we all love LJ. Most uh-huh. of us love Lamar Jackson, but oh, yeah. he has to be better. Of course, he has to play better. Mm-hmm. There are um, for all the flag that the wide receivers get uh, mm-hmm. about not being able to get separation and get open. You do see a lot of that um, on certain plays, but there are plays when they do get open because it's so uh, it's 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 so uh, the, the 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 scheme is like the margin for error is so small. You have Thank to be you. perfect. Thank you. You have to be perfect 24-7. So mm-hmm. if Lamar's only taking two deep shots a game and he misses both, it's blown out of proportion. If he throws the ball down the field five times and he misses two and hits three, we're not having these conversations. If Rashad Bateman gets 10 targets and he catches seven of them and he drops three, are we really having this, you know what I'm saying, or if two of them are inaccurate and one of them is a drop or however you want to Dice it up if he catches seven out of his ten targets. Are we really having this conversation? He's getting five targets, so you want him to catch all five or four, or however many you want him to catch. So it's like it's small. Mm-hmm. Margin for error is small. I um I don't I don't have any notes written down uh for for this video. Um I don't have anything saved on my phone, anything like that. But I feel with what you just said, like you were reading my notes. So you seen something that I got <laughs> stored in my phone or something? Because I was thinking the exact same thing. And like, man, he's, he's saying what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, the, the volume, the volume, it can be so low mm-hmm. a lot of times that everything. And this is this is not just a this year issue. This yeah. has been over the past couple of years. 
yeah. the, the passing volume is so low mm -hmm. that everything gets highlighted that much more. Everything mm -hmm. is that bigger when it doesn't go the right way. Absolutely. And again, like I said, uh, like you mentioned, Lamar, he ain't been perfect. He done yeah. had his issues. Mm -hmm. But the receivers, they ain't been perfect. They done had their issues. And of course, yep. Giro, he ain't been perfect. He done had his issues as well. Yep. Uh, but for, for the offense, that's why it, when they do mess up, it hurts that much more. If everybody ain't on the same page, it hurts that much more. Because yep. they ain't passing the ball like crazy like that. Exactly. So yeah. we'll see how this thing uh, – go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying, man, I agree. Like, that's how it's been. Like, you know, if you – like I said, man, if you're not – it's it's a uh, it's a volume, like you said, bro. It's volume. If if you're not attempting a lot of those deep shots or mm -hmm. things of that nature, and you're, you know, you're missing two, and all you took was two for that game, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. Lamar missed. Like when Lamar missed to Thailand, and he missed, uh, he missed Thailand last uh, last week versus the Bengals. Well, the mm -hmm. week before last, and he missed Duvernay as well. Yeah. Um, those two misses, I don't think we attempted to go down the field again for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the a lot of everything was in the middle with Mark Andrews after that. Like, it's like once we, once something doesn't work, and I remember you've even said this before, like we go away from it when it doesn't work. When it, when it goes bad, we just, we go away from it. We don't even try it anymore. Like mm. I'm kind of seeing that. And that was like from the past, but I'm kind of seeing that as a recently, like if we miss on, on a, on an opportunity mm -hmm. once or twice, we shut down shop and we just try to, we just, you know, try to find other ways to move the ball. Yeah, man. Um, so hopefully, hopefully moving forward, uh, Ravens can start to get a lot of this stuff right because they, they're a team that's they're close. They yeah. they, they 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 are close. Um, again, every single game, double digit leads. Mm -hmm. Again, in the game, the games that they lost in the fourth quarter, you leading by twenty one against the Dolphins. The Bills, they had a uh, they had a 17 point lead at one time, then it just mm -hmm. kept shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And then, mm -hmm. of course, against the Giants, they had a 10 point lead with six minutes left, not in a half, right. not in a court, but it, but in a game. They had yeah. six minutes left in a game, mm -hmm. and it just it all came crumbling down. So, hopefully, these Ravens could get it turned around. I know a lot of people got their doubts, um, but hopefully. They can get it turned around. They need to shake something up. We just they start clicking on all cylinders. Or something got to give. Yeah, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but before we get out of here, one more time, uh, let everybody know where where they can find you at. Uh, yeah, man. If you want to, you know, have a conversation with me, you want to talk to me, it's easy to reach on Twitter at Jamil Seven Underscore J A M E E L uh, Seven Underscore. Get cool, at me, man. man. Follow me on Twitter, you know, all that good stuff. I'm with and the I, smoke. <laughs> and I have uh, his link down below in the description just to make it easy for y'all. So I appreciate you coming on. Uh, thank you. Uh, no for problem, sure. Bro. For sure, gonna bring you on again. You already know what time it is, man. Thank oh, you, sure. McLean. Uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter because he'll be bringing it like literally every single day. Uh, so much love to you. Keep doing your thing. Thank yes, you, McLean. Yes. And you know just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven Shout out to Graven